Meat shielding is one of the most important aspects of floor 30, and choosing the right meat shields to use is the first step toward victory. Due to the way Hermit attacks, conventional meat shielding tactics will not help you here, and you must instead rely on a few meat shields spawned sparingly and at very precise moments. There are three standard meat shields for this stage, Manic Mohawk, Manic Eraser, and Rice Ball. I'll go over each of them in detail, starting with Mohawk. Mohawk at level 30 has 6380 health, 493 attack, and 28 speed. As the fastest of the three meat shields, not to mention the cheapest, Mohawk is the best one to stall Hermit when he's alone. His health means he gets one shot by all enemies, except Trolley Blogger. While he cannot tank, you can still use him to either take hits to protect your attackers, or to make Hermit miss. His attack is also good to take out bloggers, he kills them in 3 hits, 2 if level 31 or above, though Mohawk is still vulnerable to them. It's also not ideal when you're looking to reposition, as he might kill bloggers too fast. His damage can sometimes knock back or kill peons at very specific levels, though in most cases this is of little relevance. Now let's move on to Rise Ball. Rise Ball at level 30 has 10,200 health, negligible attack, and 24 speed. Rice Ball dies in 1 hit from Doge or Hermit, but he can tank 1 hit from Cinch, 2 of level 44, as well as a load of blogger hits. You can still use him to make Hermit miss, but Rice Ball has two very important roles aside from that, repositioning and fighting Snitch at your base. To reposition with Rice Ball, let Blogger hit Musashi, then use Rice Ball on it. Rice Ball has 110 range, while Blogger has 220. Due to this, if you let Blogger hit Musashi, then send out Rice Ball, he'll have to move in front of Musashi to target Blogger, protecting Musashi from Hermit in the process. Rice Ball's knockback immunity makes him invaluable for this. As for fighting Snitch at your base, it's a similar case. Snitch has 120 range, but Rice Ball has 110. This means that if you let Snitch hit the base, Rice Ball will have to move ahead, and therefore in front of the base, to reach it. This is good not only for saving base health, but also to bait Hermit's attack so that he doesn't kill your base. This is something Manic Mohawk cannot do. However, you have to be careful not to send out Rice Ball too early, or else Snitch will kill before Hermit starts his animation, and he'll move forward to target your base instead. You can also use Rice Ball to tank Snitch hits even when you're not fighting at your base. Lastly, Manic Eraser. It has negligible attack and 20 speed. Eraser can tank 2 hits from Snitch, 1 hit from Dark Doge, and even takes a hit from Hermit at level 40. Manic Eraser is not ideal for stalling in general due to its lower speed. However, where it shines is that tanking hits from peons to protect your attackers and potentially bait Hermit's attack as well. Its 110 range allows it to counter Snitch at your base. Eraser can be used to reposition with Blogger, but Rice Ball usually works a lot better due to the immunity and speed. If your Eraser is level 40 or above, it can take a hit from Hermit. This means that Hermit's wave will be doubled when you use it to stall, which can make your attackers get hit twice and overall complicate timings. With good timing, you can send Eraser through a single wave and it will survive to reach Hermit, but it will be left with such low health that any peon can easily finish it off, including bloggers. Here's a summary of the important points you should keep in mind. Manic Mohawk is best for general stalling, killing bloggers, and taking single hits. Rice Ball is best to deal with bloggers and to reposition. Manic Eraser is best to tank multiple hits. One more thing to note is that you should always use at least two meat shields in conventional runs. Part of the reason why is because Manic Mohawk and Rice Ball are the two best meat shields and fill very different roles, but using two meat shields also allow for so many more mistakes for free. Now for some advanced meat shielding tactics. When you send out Swimmer and he's bound to hit a Peon, summon Manic Mohawk as well so he can intercept the Peon and allow Swimmer to chip it. This is one of the more important improv plays to utilize and can be seen a lot when using Swimmer on the stage. It's always nice to have a general sense of Dark Doge's position relative to Hermit after he kills one of your meat shields that was attacking Hermit, like Rice Ball targeting Hermit and Doge coming in to murder Rice Ball before Hermit does. If you had a low range meat shield on Hermit, Manic Eraser or Rice Ball, Hermit and Doge are now in roughly the same position, since Doge and your meat shields both have 110 range. This is the easiest setup to kill Doge while hitting Hermit at the same time using Bahamut, 
if you don't have a good sense of timing. It's also good to keep in mind so you don't try to chip Dark Doge with Maglev and he hits Hermit instead. When you knock back a peon, usually Snage, that was targeting the base, it's best to very slightly delay the meat shield you spawn to avoid wasting time with its attack animation, allowing it to move forward and bait Hermit's attack immediately. 